So we made a new widget, and this one is all about helping you annotate data from within your notebook. The easiest way to explain how exactly this works is to also just immediately start with a motivating example. So what I've got over here is a long list of examples. The examples represent a long list of dictionaries, and every single dictionary has an item called text. These are customer service responses. And I'm dealing with a subset here where most of the things in here should be about a delivery that's late, but there might also be other complaints about the delivery. Maybe the delivery was on time, but there was something wrong with the food, let's say. So the goal for this data set is kind of the classical classification use case. But as you'll see in a moment, the new widget doesn't just support this use case. It's just a use case that's really easy to uh, explain. So uh, one more time, I've got a list of examples. Each example is a dictionary, and there's a bit of text uh, that's attached. Now, what I could do is I could grab that first example, let's say, and I can uh, have a function that can maybe render it. The big idea here is that we take our example and that we have some sort of a function that can just turn that into HTML. This is what the HTML looks like. And this is what it would look like if it were to render. But the whole point here is that what we need is some sort of list of examples to annotate, and then some sort of way to turn each example into something that we can render in the browser. The thing that we render has to be static, but we can render lots of things. In this case, I'm rendering an example that's really fit for text classification. I'm also adding a little bit of a instruction on top over here, but the sky really is the limit. You can render whatever you like, as long as you can render it Inside of HTML in a browser, you can render it in this widget. That's the idea. And with that introduction out of the way, this is what the widget looks like. Now, before diving into how this widget works, let's also just have a quick look at the code. The widget in question here is this simple label widget, and it needs those two things that I mentioned. It needs a list of examples, and it needs that render function. Given those two things, though, I can generate a widget that looks like this. The example is being rendered here in the middle. Then on top over here, I've got a progress bar. And below that, I have some buttons that I can press. So for each example, the idea is that you are pretty much dealing with a yes or no scenario. Sometimes you might want to skip the example. There can be good reasons for it. And we also added a previous button over here for navigation. And for every example that you annotate, you can also add some notes. So let's zoom in on this one example. Is the late delivery label appropriate here? And this is about a delivery that never even showed up. So I would say, yes, this is indeed appropriate. There's a text here, just yo. I don't know how this got in here, but that does not feel appropriate. And in this case, it's about the delivery that is going to happen in the future, but customer service is not getting back to them. So in this case, it's not about the late delivery. I'm going to type no here, but you can annotate some examples here. And if you're doing machine learning, you need some annotations. So having this around is nice. So I just hit a few buttons, right? But the nice thing about that widget is that every time that I hit a button, we also log data that we can then fetch. So there's this get annotations method that is on the widget. And you can see this was the original text. We can also see the generated HTML. It also gets appended here. We can see that we've added the label. A timestamp is also attached. So all the labels that we are generating, we can get out by just calling this method over here. So that means that as you're annotating, you should always have access to your annotations from within the same notebook. But from here, you can also add a little bit of logic such that every time we annotate, it is added to a file or we push it into a database or you can use whatever Python you like. But we do have a widget that allows us to do simple annotations. And let's maybe go a step further. One thing I could do is I can maybe go back one and we could say something like we need some clarification here. So complaint is about delivery in the future, right? It might be that we need to have this context around for whatever downstream task. And then if I were to annotate now, hit no again, go back up, that we can see that that note that I just mentioned is now also added. So this is super useful for a lot of LLM tasks. Sometimes the context that you add there is more important than the actual label, but you are able to add whatever note that you see fit. And to maybe add a little bit of sugar on top on that one, browsers these days have a lot of fancy APIs, one of which is a text-to-speech API. It's mainly Chrome and Chrome variants that have this feature, but what you could do is you could hit this button over here, and when I click it, you're going to see my speech be turned into text over here. And as I'm speaking, you can also see more and more text being added. So if you're maybe a bit lazy and you don't feel like typing on the keyboard, uh, this is also a totally valid way to add data. I'm going to stop record. I'm just going to hit skip for now, just to scroll back up and indeed to confirm that the long note that I just dictated is in fact attached here. So that's also a nice feature. Another thing to also observe is that for all the things that we're doing here, you can also use keyboard shortcuts. In fact, the keyboard shortcuts are configurable. The defaults are uh, you keep Alt pressed down and then one through six. Those are all the combinations that you can use to trigger something, but all of that is configurable. So there's a dictionary that you can add at the beginning, and this will allow you to 
not even have to use the mouse. You can even go one step further, and that is that you can also attach a gamepad. I've got a Bluetooth one right over here. And what's really nice from here is that I can kind of just lean back, hit these buttons as I see fit. I can go back, I can skip, I can hit yes, I can hit no, and all these buttons are of course configurable. And if I really feel like it, I can also have one button pressed down. And when I do that, the recording also automatically starts. And when I let go, the recording also stops. If you feel like having an annotation session from within a notebook, you can actually grab kind of a comfortable chair, lean back and annotate everything using a gamepad if you so insist. But you can also just use the mouse and the keyboard if you don't have one of these lying around. This to me is super exciting for a couple of reasons. For starters, we are very flexible over here. We don't really care what you render in here. You can render something that's relevant for a classification use case, but you could also maybe render something that's more appropriate for a retrieval task. Maybe there's a query and there's also a result that comes back and the annotation is, does this result match this query? Yes, no. Similarly, if you're doing some prompt engineering, you might have this response from an LLM with prompt one and maybe for another one with prompt two. You can compare the results in kind of a blind taste test, if you will, but comparing two items that is also a binary thing. So that is also something you can totally do with this simple interface. Another thing you shouldn't forget is that you're in a Python notebook here. So if you wanted to, you can do clever things with active learning. Every 10 annotations or so, you could do a small training loop for maybe one epoch and then use that to fetch examples where the model is the most confused. In a lot of ways, the sky is the limit. And because you're in a notebook, you're kind of invited to fool around and play a bit. And I do think something about that is just really empowering. In the data field, a lot of good ideas tend to strike when you're able to play around and when you're actually able to be creative. And having a small widget like this uh, can really help in that department. So if you're interested in giving this a spin, the name of the library is MoLabel. Inside of that, there is the simple label widget. Link is in the show notes. Feel free to give it a spin. Let us know what you think.